Charles, first of all, first of all, I really enjoy this film, and I love how the the moniker "Barbarians." You think it's going to be one image, but really, can you talk about the moniker and how it's re- it's really a multi layered meaning that really beneath the surface, among every well, every individual, no matter what class structure there is, there lies some kind of beast, maybe possibly. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. I mean, the word "barbarians." Um, I mean, originally it was from anyone who wasn't a Roman. Uh, they, it was just like all the collections of tribes who weren't civilized were just called barbarians and were viewed as animals who were people who were uncivilized. So, um, uh, I mean, there's there's different layers, I guess, to the meaning, but the idea is it's a civilized dinner party, uh, but who is civilized and who's not? And what is the definition of being a civilized human being? And um, that's that's sort of where the where the title comes from, yeah. You know, Catalina, looking at your resume, your body of work, you've always had, from my estimation, a kinship with really indie-driven storytellers, and you're, you've been very selective, and just wondering if you saw that kind of energy working with Charles, and is that one of the reasons why Barbarians was an appeal to you as a storyteller? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I don't think Hollywood can is attracted to these kind of stories. It's, it's not... I've I've never seen something like this apart from like aside from like Marvel movies. I mean like it's that's a different world that I just don't understand very well. I understand um, a, a relationship between humans, problems. Um, I can I can relate to a lot of them, um, and this is the I mean the this sort of movie that you just feel attracted to because it's just four people sitting on a table dealing with stuff with talking about life and then something crazy happens and how you're going to deal with the craziness when it happens um it's it was and, and and i was right it was it was a very interesting experience to 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 work to work in and to work with these fantastic actors who are great and to work with charlie and a it was just a good combination of stuff you know on a surface level someone a cinephile can enjoy this movie as a home invasion thriller. So you can enjoy it on that service level. But I really enjoyed the fact that a lot of the characters in the story, there, there's a lack of accountability of of things. And can both of you guys guys kind of speak to that sort of subtle theme about this, about just taking control of your actions and and being accountable and not taking credit for things. And what I just yeah. I just really loved a lot how it was just sort of baked into the whole surface level story. There's a lot more to it. Yeah. Um yeah I um the idea of Adam's character was to was to look at um, essentially it's a, it's a sort of coming of age story, and to look at um, how you might go from a child to become an adult. And my thinking of definitions of becoming an adult was exactly what, as you say, is taking accountability and speaking your mind and having, I guess, a, an alignment of your thoughts, words, and actions, which you know Adam certainly doesn't. He's going out of his way to please people, but he's become a sort of, uh, he's, he's not very associated with speaking the truth, which means that he's, he lies a, bit, a lot. And Lucas is certainly a liar. Um, I mean, I think um, the only adult in the room probably is ever. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't do that, I guess the question is, so what? And the answer is, uh, chaos will come and then you'll have to deal with it. And if you're not ready, um, and, and she's the, and you know, it's no coincidence that she's actually the person with a plan and deals with uh, stuff as it comes up versus reaching for uh, no idea what to do, essentially. Yeah, from your estimation, Catalina, how does Eva have so much patience with everyone, everyone in the room? Because she seems to really know who she is, what she wants. When there's a when a problem arises regarding negotiations, she takes action. How does she find that patience when and she's pretty much like Charles is saying, pretty much the only grown up in the room? You know. Yes, I mean, you just described her. You know, there's there are certain people that you know know who they are, know what they have, know what they have to offer. Um, you know, she's she's very conscious that. Her talent, um, she knows. She knows that her talent will make. You know, she, she makes that deal with with uh, Lucas right there in that moment. You know, she knows what she what she can get from her talent. You know, it's 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 someone very secure of herself. 
And I think that's why she can be with Adam in that moment of the, the, the Adam moment that he's going through a very rough patch in his life. If she wasn't as secure and if she wasn't that confident, um, I don't think they will have that relationship that they have. But because she is very, she's having a good, a good moment in her career, she's very secure. She knows that she wants to be in that house, for example. Um, I think that's helping Adam. You know, that's her, 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 her way of her, helping Adam through the patch that he's having. It's just a secure person. And in that moment of the movie, she's very, um, she's just ready for anything. And I, I don't know if this is a, I'm trying to draw a link between both of you, but Charles, from looking your from your work as a producer and now a first time filmmaker, it seems that you're in the, the business, not just to make money. You want to actually tell really interesting stories and same thing with you, Catalina, after when you burst on the scene, you could have, you know, not for nothing, you could have gone for more commercial work and you're like, I, I'll go with, I'll hang out with Soderbergh for a while and, and make make something really epic. And it just seems both of you really, cinema, cinema was important to both of you from an early age. Am I correct on this or am I, am I inaccurate on, in that assessment? Uh, I mean, for uh, yeah, for me, uh, yeah, I've been um, uh, obsessed with film for as long as I can remember. Uh, my grandfather had a, a large collection of movies and I was sort of left to be able to watch whatever I wanted, which probably wasn't quite as uh, responsible as you, you know, one might hope. But I watched a lot of films growing up and um, I've also worked a lot in theatre. So I think, you know, it's very per filmmaking. Uh, yeah, it is a business, but I, it is personal to me. And I think uh, particularly like a relationship with an audience um, I, I think entertaining an audience is wonderful, uh, but I think you know the ability to tell a story and to move them and to excite them, to make them think, uh, you know, certainly when that's done, when that's happened to me, it's been the sort of most inspiring moments of my life. So that's sort of what motivates me. I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. I don't know if I've achieved it, but that's certainly what motivates me. And, and for you, Catalina, as well, is that the same track, I guess? Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with Charlie completely. I, I, you know, I started doing, you know, my career started with Maria Full of Grace and I had the, uh, the privilege to fly around the world to all these festivals and I could see people how affected they were for this movie. And they were telling me after the movie, they were telling me stories about someone, they knew someone uh, that they were drug mules and now, you know, they're, you know, they're caught in jail and they're, you know, 20, 20 something years in jail. And, um, you know, other people would tell me, oh my God, I was thinking about this when I was back in Venezuela and I'm glad I didn't do it. I'm so thankful for this movie. So when you see this reaction that a movie can just having people, you just feel kind of like a responsibility, you know, like I just want to be, maybe that's, that's how, that's, that's why I haven't gotten into like, the super mainstream movies um, because I just don't find the, the the humanity sometimes in the characters. But, you know, in, in these movies, you just find human behavior. And and um, I, I, I just feel that, I don't know, my life would have been different if I started with a comedy that, you know, that people would just laugh and, and, you know, would just go out of the theater having like a good laugh and a good time. But because my career started with such a, such a strong and for, it was very powerful, like all the stories that I, that I was hearing through the, the whole year that I was traveling with this movie, that I just felt kind of responsible with my work. And I just have to be very honest with myself and very, um, yeah, just just honest with my work. Like I, I was not going into this to just make millions of dollars. Like that was not the purpose of me going into film or acting. I just wanted to act. I just wanted to, you know, just be different people. Um, so yeah, my life would have been different if I would have started with a different movie. Final couple of questions. And, you know, I, I do a couple of movie review podcasts and this is a tough question and I apologize, but can each of you name right off the top of your head one of your all-time favorite films and what is it about this specific movie that still resonates with you today? Charlie. <laughs> um, one film? <laughs> That's yeah. kind of challenge. You're uh, the boss, you can do whatever you want, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, uh, 
uh, oh shit, this is sliding. Um, uh, the the film that I watched and then afterwards I was like I need I want to make films 100 was um uh, Brighton Rock, um, uh, but the probably my favorite film uh, is probably the Sweet Smell of Success, uh, the Burt, Burt Lancaster Tony Curtis and uh, I don't know why I mean when I watched that film I was just sort of blown away how contemporary it felt and the dialogue was so wicked uh, and. Uh, it felt really honest in its sort of re revealing of, you know, the darker side of um, how people behaved. And I love to watch people lie. I think watching people lie on screen is incredibly engaging. It's probably partly why there's a lot of it in Barbarians. Um, and that's, that's uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and as, I mean, Sidney Lumet and Cl uh, Clifford Odette was a great playwright. Uh, and um, Alexander McKendrick is a fantastic director. And, uh, it just it's a it was a really uh, life changing film for me. Cool, and you, Catalina, how about you? I'm not I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. Oh, okay. I mean, no, it's 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 too much of a spotlight. I have many films that have inspired me to keep um, to keep bettering myself as an actress. Um, I just have a bunch like I just I, you know there, there's just a bunch of films that I just cannot say just one my favorite and last question what are you guys working on uh, next and uh, just a two, second part on that Charles you mentioned McKendrick I mean McKendrick during his career made several films do you yeah. see yourself as a first-time filmmaker being sort of a, a lot more you know prolific than McKendrick with, with respect to him and so yeah just what's next for both of you guys uh, I mean, he stopped. He stopped relatively young in his career, but became a teacher, um, which I'm thankful for because his book sort of taught me how to direct. Um, but um, uh, what was the question? What am I working? What we work? I would. Um, What's next for you guys? Yeah. Next, um, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm writing my next thing, uh, which I'm probably not going to speak about here, um, but. Uh, something else that I've recently uh, um, I've been developing is the um, the case in, in Skokie, Illinois, about um, it's a, the case of a, um, a, a Jewish lawyer who represented the American Nazi Party for the ACLU in the 1970s, um, and it became a landmark case for freedom of speech. Um, and I've been uh, working on that project. Uh, but that won't that that's not the thing I'm writing and will direct next. Cool. Very interesting, Charlie. And I, I know IMDB is a hundred percent like inaccurate all the time. Are I, I saw this thing that you're connected with a, a John Woo project. Is that correct? Is that not oh my goodness. I've interviewed him a bunch of times. One of the nicest guys. That one's correct. <laughs> okay. So what's yeah. it been like so far? Because he's just really one of the nicest people I've I've interviewed over the years, I guess. Very I unassuming. Know. Yeah. So. Um he um uh, I was there for the month of for most of the most of the month of march um and now i have to go back at the end of april uh but it's a uh, action thriller silent movie oh That's amazing and as as i'm leaving as a writer charles is writing a very ice very isolating lonely process or is there just too much made about that whole myth about the solitary existence of a writer do you, it, do you it's, yeah. uh, it's absolutely horrendous uh and i hate it <laughs> uh i i love work collaborating with people um and actually to be honest with you when i wrote barbarians i acted at most of i acted out um and a friend of mine um typed uh, I mean, I've been working on it myself, but then um, the final draft, I basically acted everything out in my kitchen. Uh, uh, so that was, now I've treated that more like rehearsal than writing, and I enjoyed that a lot. Thank you guys so much for your time. Really appreciate it.